evolution of sound. Beep beep, what's up ninjas? My name is Sam Rold and today I'm gonna teach you how to sound like Kashmir. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this by utilizing a project file from the Kevu Domination project files which come out this Friday. For those of you guys who want answers and want to dominate your productions, more information can be found in the description um, below in the comments. Now, let's get started. The first thing we're going to be looking at are the leads which sound like this. <laughs> Okay, now for the leads, what you're gonna wanna use is Silent One. I think Silent One here works best because if you use Serum, Serum is a little bit too complicated for what you're trying to do here. Kashmir's lead sound usually are very, very, very simple to make, but they're processed just beautifully. So the first sound you're gonna be using is one that's gonna be in the center of the mix. Most of the time I teach my students that you need to have a center, a mono lead, and a stereo lead in order to complete the whole mix because if someone plays your song in a car stereo or in a shitty radio or at the club where everything sounds mono, if you have a stereo lead only it's not going to sound as powerful as it should so this is the first lead you're going to use you're going to need a very thin mono lead and then the next one is going to be another mono lead which is really going to help you guys out because this is what's going to cover the middle and give that punch in the center of the mix now the next lead you're going to need is the generic lead, the tremor layer, which is, I like to call it. This is called lead alpha male, but it sounds like this. And this is what's going to be in the stereo. Now use an S1 imager or the utility in Ableton, or you can even use Fruity Loops, which I know has like a width knob in order to get this to more of the sides, more in the stereo signal. All right, guys, and the last lead is very optional, and it's a cool technique that Kevu have developed. You're going to be able to find these all over the project files, I promise you. And pretty much, you're going to put a reverb, and you're going to put 100% wet on that reverb. Decay time all the way down and really low size, so that what you're doing is using the reverb as a sound design tool in order to shape the sound, which gives this effect. Now, when you put this together with all everything, you're going to get this lead. Now the last thing that was optional, you can hear it in the background and that's what it's meant for to cover the back. All type of, you know, reverbs tend to do that to a sound, but here we use it in order to cover some of the depth of the lead in the back of the mix. Now with that said, those are going to be the leads. Now let's move on to the bass. Alright guys, and the next thing is going to be the sub bass. Now the sub bass is going to be the first layer of your bass and you can easily make one in Silence 1 utilizing a sine wave. Now make sure to saturate the sub to give it a little bit more of depth, a little bit more grit, more harmonics to it, so it sounds like this. And that's going to be your first layer. Now, the second layers are going to be a little bit different. The first important one is going to be the standard progressive house sound, which is going to sound like this. Now, this sound is created with a saw and sine wave and a little bit of distortion. You guys know if you distort a sine, you get really cool bass lines out of it because you start to add that grit to it. Now, the next bass is going to be one that is a Melbourne style bass. Here we did a little bit of, you know, processing to make it punch out of the mix but Cashmere likes to use these offbeat bass lines with the normal progressive house bass and this adds a lot of movement to the song which sounds like this and you can make your own bass or you can just you know get a preset from uh, silent one I'm sure you're gonna be able to find one like we did here BS electric bass now that's gonna complete the bass and if you have everything it should sound like this Now let's move on to the kick. Now the kick is something that a lot of people always mess up on and I always make jokes about a couple of friends of mine that used to do mixing and mastering and sometimes all they would do is change out the kick and the mix would sound instantly like 10 times better and they would just send out the track, they would get paid 500 to mix and master a track and that's it. So pretty much the kick is something that is very, very important here. Now if we go in and see the kick, you're going to see that the kick is not taking up that much room and especially, you know, here's the halfway mark. It's only going to be taking almost like one fourth of the space between the kicks. As you can see, there's all of this empty room before the next kick hits. And that's important because when you have a small kick, you're going to allow everything else to just pop out more because the kick doesn't have everything else side chained, as you guys know. Now, the important thing here is going to be to make sure that your kick and your sub have a good correlation, which sounds like this. And what you want to hear is the kick hits and then the sub comes in and that's the perfect correlation. You don't want to hear like kick hits, boom, and then it takes like maybe half or, or a second for the sub to go. Bam. So it needs to be not do ah, do ah. So this is how it sounds like. 
and it's fucking perfect. This is when you know you have a good correlation. And using small kicks like that, like Cashmere does, is going to allow you to do this. Now, the last thing to sound like Cashmere are going to be the drums. Now, the drums are kept very simple, especially in festival house and progressive house of this sort, because the more groove you add to it, the more power you're going to lose in your drop. So a lot of the times what you just want to do is have a right hitting on every kick and having a clap and some white noise in the back, which sounds like that. Now, the ride is there to kind of hype things up along with the clap. And finally, the last thing is going to be the white noise. This is a really crazy technique that not a lot of people knew about until like a lot of people decided to speak up on it. One of the things that I found when I was making these tutorials is that I would make a song and it wouldn't have white noise and it would sound so empty. But when you add the white noise, it sounds fuller because the white noise is covering the frequencies that aren't being used up by any of the leads. So white noise, always playing when the kick is present, will always help make your track sound better and sound like cashmere. All right, guys, and that's going to be the end of the video. And hopefully this helps you sound like cashmere. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, why would anyone want to sound like cashmere? In order to be a great producer, you first must understand what makes other producers great. And sound selection is something that is very, very important. Now, hopefully this video helped you guys out. We utilize the Kevo Domination Project Files again. And if you guys are interested in checking them out, what they're about, make sure to click in the link in the comments and description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Then just take care and have an amazing day.